Thank you, God. Send the glory. Simple, I give you. Lord, I give Thank you, Lord. Uh -huh. Good morning. How are you doing? This is Morning Manna uh, with yours truly, Dr. Joyce the Third, and the virtual tabernacle of St. John the Mighty Fortress. Please share with uh, neighbors and friends and loved ones and let them know um, that we're on uh, this webcast again. So grateful to God that we're continuing uh, this type of worship experience early morning as you are preparing for other services. Thank you for joining in with us this morning to get you along life's way. As you take this moment, this opportunity, uh, if there's any prayer requests or concerns, you can please share them with us. Uh, thank you for those that continue to inbox and as well as text uh, and email and that we are praying with you because we know that prayer is the key to the kingdom and faith unlocks the door. So as we prepare, uh, won't you join us um, in this virtual prayer experience? Most kind, gracious, and all wise God, we thank you for another opportunity, another Sunday morning uh, that you have made and we rejoice in it and we are glad that as we go forth, Lord, on this day, we ask, um, as we have always asked, that the words that we speak and that which is in our heart will always be acceptable in your sight. Allow us uh, to continue to decrease that you may increase in our lives. Give us a word that will be able um, to encourage those uh, that are listening as well as motivate others uh, to do and be their best. Now, we thank you as always and we give you the glory uh, in the midst, Lord, of all that's going on around us. That you are still God. Besides you, there's none other. And so we ask that you continue to keep us from your care. Allow us um, to be prosperous, healthy, and wealthy in Jesus' name. As you said, whatsoever we ask in his name, he will do it. That the Father will be glorified through the Son. So it's done in Jesus' name. And every heart say amen, amen, and amen. This morning, we're going to be looking again, going back uh, to uh, 2 Samuel. And this time, we're going to be looking in 2 Samuel chapter 7 verses 1 through 11. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verses 1 through 11. Follow along with us as we share these words from the Holy Writ. After the king was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house cedar while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it for the Lord is with you. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? Have I not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day? I've been moving from place to place with the tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people, Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says, I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel and I will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning. And I've done uh, since that time. I've appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. So. As we hear now, um, as we share this morning, we want to talk about the failure of success, the failure of success. As we enter into that particular theme and topic, again, we're looking at the life of David as we have been uh, since last week. And so we uh, shared that not only was David a warrior, but he was also a worshiper. Yes, he was also a worshiper. And so in being a warrior, he was not a worrier. And I'm asking you this question, why worry when you can worship? That as you go through life and we worry about so many things, 
uh, why worry when you can worship? Worship was so vital and so important to the life of David that um, the Psalms and other songs, that many of them that he had penned himself, because as the scripture says that they believed he was a man after God's own heart, and that he was so loving and into uh, the gloriousness of God and lifting up his name, that at one time, uh, which we'll talk about um, on Tuesdays, uh, almost cost him a divorce. Uh, in life, you know, we go through trials, troubles, and tribulations, but we need to understand that worship stays center and foremost. Even as you are going through success, worship has to be an important part of your life. All of us must understand that God must be held in awe reverently. His name should be held in a, in a, a sense of wonder. Uh, because it does not yet appear who he really is. And, and as God reveals God's self or part of God's self, um, we still have so much yet to behold. And as we deal with the experiences of life, why worry uh, when we can worship? And as we worship the name of the Lord, his name is to be held in reverence. When you call on the name of God, you know, you understand that God's name is holy. When you deal with the name of God and you come in the presence of God, um, that you come in ready to worship him in spirit and in truth. That uh, whether we're in church, and the wonderful thing about it is that being in church does not mean being in a building. Um, but we know that uh, the church is within us and that when we assemble together as a group, you know, even outside, um, that we are assembling together to worship God and that our assemblage, uh, God created that, that we may continue to honor him. That every time we lift up holy hands and, uh, and every time we call out his name, um, it's uh, a blessing uh, because we worship God in the beauty of holiness. And it has just been some, a, a joy and a blessing to be able to worship God. When we talk about the beauty of holiness, and many times we talk about buildings, but to be in the environment and in the nature that God has created, that in the mist, even when it's raining or it's cloudy, that is all its creation. And it is as if we're all gathered together uh, to lift up his holy name. And so when we come in the presence of God, we know uh, that even David says that we are in, to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. See, don't take for granted the success that you, because it is only by the grace of God that you have it. And in order to be successful, worship has to be number one. The more we worship God, the more, you know, is being added to you. Matthew 6.33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. See, David got it together when he was at Obed-Edom's house. David, he came with the sacrifice. Not only uh, do we have to worship, but we also have to bring a sacrifice. And the sacrifice that we give is not uh, rams and bulls and lambs, uh, but it is the sacrifice of praise and praising God. God is saying, just open your mouth, lift up your hands wherever you are uh, and give him the glory. Worship brings a sense of also responsibility when you worship God. Uh, God opens up our hearts and opens up our minds and shows us how to give and to even meet the needs of those that are around us. It's just amazing that in worship, you take your mind off of yourself and your problems and you place it upon the problem solver. And you get so bogged down and depressed about all the stuff that you're dealing with and going through that when God opens your heart and you begin to worship him, you leave worship, whether it's even in your home, in your car, trying to figure out ways in which to bless other people. And so uh, that even in the midst of your lowest, God will bless you that have more than enough that you will be able to bless others that even when you bless others, God will still give you more than enough, that you'll even have an overflow in your home. See, when you keep your good in circulation, because when you give to others, God gives it back to you. And so we understand, you know, that even 
in being successful by his grace and his mercy does not allow us to be immune from failure. See, David came home with success. And when he came home, uh, and as he was leaving Obed-Edom's house, and when they really got it together and understood uh, how to bring in the Ark of the Covenant into the city, and the scripture states that as David was bringing the Ark of the Covenant into the city, he began to dance. And oh, did David dance. And as David began to dance, uh, the scripture states that he danced out of his linen ephod, that he danced out of that which he was wrapped up in. And his wife was looking out of the window, and as uh, she was watching him dance uh, before the people, but dance, most importantly, before God, um, he was met with confrontation. The word says that, Michael, she despised him in his heart when she saw him carrying on like that. Because not only did he dance, um, that when the Ark of the Covenant arrived into the Holy City, he began to bless the people that were there. And she, she remained uh, in her room looking out of the window. And as he came home to that confrontation, um, it, having a joyful worship experience, how many times even have we, you know, uh, uh, in attempting to bless individuals, we were met with confrontation. And so as David corrected Michael, his wife, um, and he said, you know, that uh, she mentioned, that, oh, how did uh, the, the king dance before the people today? You know, um, and said it in such a sly way that uh, David said, yes, I dance and I would dance even harder than that and even more than that. Uh, but because of his wife's despisement from her heart, um, that uh, her womb was shut uh, because she spoke that which was in her heart out of her mouth. When there are things that many times we do not understand, and how many of us have seen things and God has done things, and you can raise your hand, that we did not understand, and we may think it was foolish, it was crazy, it was uh, uncouth, and all these things, we just didn't understand it, but we knew it was God. Sometimes it's better to keep your mouth shut. God has a way of dealing with us, and God dealt with Michael right in the flesh because of her talking. And she spoke herself right out of history. Um, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Um, and God was with David. Even when his family was against him, God was with him. And that is the thing that we want you to understand. And even there are times, and many times your family or your friends, they don't mean any harm. They don't understand your walk with God or your belief system or what you've gone through. All they are doing is just seeing where you are and they don't know what you've been through. Uh, but God will give you rest. God's promises are true and faithful. And that's what God gave David. He gave him rest. Uh, and God gave David also rest from his enemies. Um, there will be a time when you put God first and when you worship him, uh, God will get you in a place that you will be able to have some peace. How many of y'all want peace? I mean peace. And I'm not talking about, you know, a, a piece of pie, a piece of cake, you know, a, a piece of steel. But I'm talking about P-E-A-C-E, -E, the peace that passeth all human understanding. That's what Jesus said he would give us. Um, but again, to have that kind of peace and to know what it feels like to have spiritual peace. Uh, that's the important part of being successful, is when you can focus on that, when you can focus on that and when you begin to understand uh, that particular peace, that yes, that peace is that passes all understanding. Uh, and he wants you to know what that kind of peace feels like. And when he, you feel it, you know it's from God. And then you can focus on God and not your enemies. God wants you to get to that point. But you need to worship and honor. God wants you to be successful. But don't allow your success to be a failure because of confrontation. So when David was so excited and he got home, and he was at peace with God, and God had given David the desires of his heart. 
Then David even more so said that I want to build God a house. I live in a house. I, I want to build God's presence and I want to be able to put God's presence in something that's going to be permanent. Uh, and God spoke through the prophet Nathan to tell a servant. He said to tell a servant that sometimes the failure of success is that we're so successful we forget who we are and from where we've come. God did not call David king. God told the prophet, he says, tell my servant. Don't ever forget that all of us were servants. Doesn't matter how much we have, what we have, what we've accomplished. At the end of the day, the Lord giveth. That's what we believe. And the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Don't ever get too haughty. And don't ever get too high. That you forget from which you, from which you come. And also we remember that whatever you have, whatever he's given you, it is to be a blessing to others. We are servants. God let David know that he did not need a house built for his ark. And so therefore, you know, many times we think that uh, we can bless God with what he's blessed us with. God don't need that. You know, he has everything that he needs. God just wants us to have a mindset to treat others right. And so when you look at far, how far God has brought you, God reminded David, God, he, he says, I brought you from the pasture to the palace. He said, I brought you from being a servant to becoming a king. Do each of you remember where he's brought you from? You may look and talk about what you don't have now, but I'm telling you this, I believe you have more today than you had yesterday or five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, or when you was growing up as a child. And not only did he bring you, he kept you. Do you remember God, how God has kept you? Do you remember how God, you know, put that, you know, what the old saints would talk about, a hedge of protection. And we'll talk about that later because we can talk about what is a hedge. You know, we'll get around to that. And so, not only has God brought you, God has kept you. How also, even your name, he's made you known. Look at you now and look at how so many people are blessed because of who you are. You know, and know you by your name. Look at where God has brought your name from and to. You didn't do that, but God, he did it. And so, when God told David that, you know, from being an obscure shepherd's boy to being a king, he says, I made your name great. I did that. So as we close, what are the three thoughts that we want to leave with you this morning? First of all, to keep from having a failure in the midst of your success. There are three things, you know, always keep before you humility. Humility, type that in. Always remain humble. Be known as the people of God by putting others first. And when you put others first, it does not mean you have to demean yourself, but it lets others know uh, that you're blessed. Humility. Number two, sincerity. In everything we do, let us do it with a pure heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. More than anything, allow people to know that your motives are pure and just. And when you, what you do for individuals, you're not expecting it back. You know, stop saying everybody's got, everybody's got to do something for you. Everybody owe you. They don't owe you anything if you did it. We have to get to that point where we are sincere. Humility, sincerity, also integrity. That is a powerful word as well. When you live a life that is pleasing to God according to his word, there's some things that you just don't want to be a part of and you just don't want to do. Uh, uh, buying, you know, uh, you buy things, but you can't buy integrity. Um, integrity is what will keep you rooted and grounded in God. You can't have integrity unless you have humility and sincerity. Humility and sincerity uh, gives you the foundation of integrity. Integrity is how you do things. And doing them from a space and place where your modus operandi uh, means that this is who I am. In the midst of fake news, we don't need no more fake people. Can God trust you as being a servant to serve his people? Humility, sincerity, and integrity cannot be bought but it's something that must be lived and taught on a daily basis. And that keeps us from having failure and success. 
you want to be successful and you've not accepted Christ, repeat these words with us. Dear Lord, I am a sinner and I'm asking you today to become the head of my life. Please forgive me from all of my sins. I believe you died on the cross for me and three days later you were raised from the grave. And because I believe today I am saved. Now Lord, please fill me with the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I am saved. Let us have a successful day and a successful week. Now, as you meditate upon humility, sincerity, and integrity. Let us listen to the sights and sounds of St. John the Mighty Fortress. Blessings to you. Thank you again uh, as you've shared uh, your sights and sounds. Let us now continue. Thank you for uh, your continued support of the ministry of the Mighty Fortress. And for those of you that are joining us, uh, and for those that have been a part, uh, here is a wonderful reminder of the 3T ministry of the Mighty Fortress. There are several ways to give to support the ministries of St. John Baptist Church, the Mighty Fortress, your time, talent, and tithe. We've made virtual giving so easy. Just text St. John SAV to 73256 and follow the prompts. That's St. John SAV 73256 and follow the prompts. Or you can call the number right on your screen to speak to someone and give your credit card information. 912-844-1872. That's 912-844-1872 or feel free to mail in your cash, donations, and tithes to St. John Baptist Church, The Mighty Fortress, 2415 East Duran Avenue, Savannah, Georgia, 31406. And to give your time and talent or to find out more information on everything going on at St. John, The Mighty Fortress, including our virtual worship experiences, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Periscope, or go to stjohnsavannah.org. Blessings to you. Thank you for being a part as always. Continue to join us for every morning uh, for the Mighty Fortress Moments. Uh, again, Sunday morning for Morning Manor. Tuesday nights, look forward to you listening to the traditional radio broadcast right here on iHeartRadio, WSOK at 7 o'clock every Tuesday. And then flip on over uh, to Facebook and YouTube uh, to watch us and share in a thoughtful Tuesdays. And as always, we are now preparing uh, in the next hour or so that we will be on the campus of St. John the Mighty Fortress outside and drive in worship. Yes, you can still come as you are or as you is uh, in your family car. Again, uh, pets are welcomed. Uh, there's more than enough space for everyone to have a wonderful worship experience. 10 a.m. 2415 East Duran Avenue, the soul of Savannah. And so until we come back again, again do not uh, allow your success to be a failure. Keep humility, sincerity, and integrity before you and watch God do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think. And until we meet again, remember these three words, all is well. Thank you, God. Send the glory. I give you glory. It's simple I give you. Glory.